Most of you may have seen the pictures of the outside of Lily Rose, so I'm going to do a quick video tour inside. Um, we've got some steps here. Lift them up, and it's useful storage for shoes. Space is at a premium, so you have to make use of uh, every bit of space. Behind the steps is a um, under deck storage area. You can actually get quite a lot of things under there. We've got toolboxes and all sorts of bits and pieces stashed under there. Wardrobes at the front. Quite neatly built in. It's quite handy having wardrobe space. Very few boats seem to have wardrobes on them. We've got the fly screens here, so when we've got the doors open in the summer, we can close those too. And it stops all of the uh, flies and bugs coming in, so you can make the most of the cool summer evenings. Stereo tucked up in there. Don't tend to use it very often, but it's handy now and again. Moving down the boat, we've got the seating area. That converts into either two single beds or one double bed. Quite a large double bed. And under the seats, as you can see, more storage. And again, that's uh, maximised. Turning around, the all-important solid fuel stove. As you can see, the fan's ruin away because it is on. And it's given out quite a bit of heat, even though it looks dead. A couple of little buckets for storing coal and kindling. All-important TV PS3, Blu-ray recorder, and Freeview box. A couple of my own pictures on the wall just to personalise the place. The most common question that I'm asked is, is it cold in the boat? And the answer to that is yes and no. It can be quite cool first thing in the morning or when you first come home from work. We have got an oil filled radiator, which is down there. That's time to come on um, early in the morning and later in the evening just to take the chill off the air. Give us time to get the fire going. Once that's going, then, as you can see, it's currently 31 degrees in here, which is nice and toasty. Obviously the heat rises as you come down lower in the boat, then you can feel the cool because you're under the water line here. Moving down into the galley, or the kitchen as I call it. Storage space, places for cups and glasses. Same on the other side. Down to the fridge. It's a little bit smaller than a house fridge. Still enough room inside and that's 12 volts so that runs off the batteries. More cupboards. Grill and cooker and the hob. And a bit more storage up there. And the lights, those lights are 240 volts. They run off the, the mains when we're hooked up, which we are at the moment. And then we have all these ceiling lights, which are nice and bright, and they are 12 volts. They run off the battery. So it's a mixture of 12 and 20 volt, uh, 240 volt. Kitchen sink with a nice new chap which I fitted yesterday because the other one was dripping and no drips from that. Moving down, there's a dining room table there, small little round one. There is a larger table which is hid behind here. Just down there you can you can make it out. And that's also the part that converts this seating area to a double bed. We've got a side hatch which we can open up. Again, let some fresh air in. We haven't quite got round to doing the fly screen for that yet, but as you can see, the sun is shining brightly. After all of the rain this morning. Moving down the boat, 
come into the bathroom. As you can see, we've got a toilet there. It's what they call a cassette toilet. So although it looks like a proper toilet, down at the back here is where the waste cassette is. So everything goes into there. You pull that out and then go and empty it. A lot of people might be turning the noses up at that, but it's quite clean. Here we've got a shower. Pretty much a standard sized shower. Uh, mix the tap to make the most of the uh, the water because you've only got a small hot water tank. So conserving the hot water is quite important. And a basin. And again, more storage under there. Down into the main bedroom and put a bit of light on. This is what they call a small double bed. Um, quite awkward to change because you're boxed in on three sides. But again, a bit of useful storage above. More cupboard space behind, which is full of clothes. Got more storage space here in these drawers. That's my underwear drawer. And then on the bed, the whole depth of the bed, um, there is a large storage area under there. We haven't got a great deal under there because it's uh, quite awkward to get into. And unfortunately it's very dark, but that goes all the way back. We then move into what I call the engine room. The engine is located under these panels here. All of those come out so you can get quite good access to the engine. There's your throttle controls, forward and reverse, your engine controls, and then your electric panel up there to turn most of your 12 volt systems on or off. And again, little areas of storage. Vacuum cleaner, which is a small one tucked out of the way. Down to your circuit breaker. And then we've got a timer under there for the hot water. Um, when we're plugged onto the mains, we run off the immersion, so that time uh, it's time to come on and off as needed. And then this little box down here is what's called an inverter. So when we're away from mains electricity, we can switch that on. You can't quite see the plugs in the top, but there's two plugs here. And we can run our 240 volt appliances off this, so TV, video, etc. can run off that when you're away from the mains power. So you become self-sufficient. Turning back around, going up the boat. Turn those off. The boat's 45 foot long. You lose a bit of the space internally because you've got the deck area outside. Under that cover that you can see in front of me is the water tank. It's quite a large water tank and you fill it up just to that little uh, circular bit on the left. Um, so again, you're, you're self-sufficient. And that is the inside of Lily Rose.